All right, ladies and gentlemen, in order to be successful for today's instruction, you need to have your notebook ready to go. You need to have... Tess? Madison's gone that way. No, just put it in a file. Okay, in order to be successful, you need to have a whiteboard ready to go, as well as your... Oh, it's your first day, Emily. This is so nice. Welcome. You need to have a whiteboard and a notebook ready to go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of... Uh, please tell me what is the name of the first country that is going to rise as an exploration power. Good. Joey. Portugal. On your whiteboard, please tell me what school is going to allow Portugal to rise as an economic power and then quickly fizz out, but really rise quickly. Who is it? Good. Tess. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the reason why Age of Exploration begins is why. Why does the age of exploration begin? Oh no, guys. Thank you. I got one. Brian, will you please educate you, Pierce? Yes, Italy is dominating the trade. So everyone's pissed off at Italy because they're making crazy money and rubbing everyone's face in it. On your whiteboard, what do we call the wind pattern and current pattern of the ocean? What do we call the wind and current pattern of the ocean? No, there's a fancy term for it. You're not wrong, really. Shannon, you're not wrong. There's a fancy pattern for it. Volta du Mar, ladies and gentlemen. Volta du Mar. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is going to, what new invention is going to allow uh, faster steering of ships? No. Faster steering, steering of ships. No. Those have nothing to do with steering. What is it, Sterling? The Chinese rudder. Chinese rudder. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the navigational tool which will allow ocean uh, navigation. I got one, two, three. Maggie. Astrolabe. Astrolabe. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first guy to go around the Cape of Good Hope? Good. Ashlyn. Yes. yes. What's the name of the English dude who is going to explore the east or west coast of the U.S.? California, Oregon. Yeah. Well, who is it? Uh, who is it, Emma? Sir Francis Drake. On your whiteboard, who is the first white person to sail to India? Who is the first white person to sail to India? Good. Who is it, Sam? Vasco de Gama. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who sails west to go east. Good. Who is it? Dirt. Columbus. Columbus. Oh, no. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Uh, please tell me what do we call the diffusion of plants and animals from old world to new world? Good. Reagan. Columbian Exchange. Columbian Exchange. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Please tell me what is the two items the old world benefits? What are two major items that the old world is going to benefit? Good. What are they going to benefit? What do you got, uh, Shannon? Uh, maize and cotton. Maize and, yeah, cotton is going to be another one. On your whiteboard, what is the biggest killer of people in the new world? What is the biggest killer of people in the new world? 
Good. What is it, Daniel? Smallpox. Smallpox. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of... Um, although mil, uh, hundred, uh, hundreds of millions of Americans die worldwide, what happens with population? Good. What is it, Lily? It increases worldwide. AP loves that crap. All right, here we go. So, uh, yesterday we started with Protestant Reformation, yes? Okay, so we know the 95 Theses is what he writes, 95 Plates Against the Catholic Church. Did he do it on purpose? Did he try to break the Catholic Church? No. no. He wanted to fix the Catholic Church, but then, you know, when the Catholic Church tries killing you 30 times, you're like, ah, maybe we can't solve this problem, okay? So, he is going to be the first person that goes viral, okay? His 95 theses will be printed on a printing press, which will be spread throughout all of Europe, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that it is going to spread very quickly. What is the last thing we wrote down? Uh, Madison. Okay, perfect. So, he wants more vernacular teaching, which means if you're in Spain, you speak. If you're in France, you speak. There you go. So, you need to know that royals, you need to write this down, royals are going to take advantage of the Protestant Reformation. Why would kings and other royals take advantage of this? Come on, Maggie. Because he divided the Pope. There you can go against the Pope. So, if you get out of Catholicism, you don't have to listen to who anymore? The Pope, and that's going to be a big deal. Okay, so... Here we go. Skip a space, center it. Protestant Reformation outside Germany. You need to know that King Henry VIII, I am, I am, you don't need to write on the last part, but you need to know King Henry VIII of England. Okay, he wants a divorce from his wife. Okay, King Henry VIII. He wants a divorce from his wife. If you met Anne Boleyn, you'd want a divorce from her too. That's good. <coughs> All right. So, he wants a divorce from his wife. The Pope said no. Okay? Pope said no. So, he becomes a Protestant. <laughs> Why? Why would he do it? Make, make it clear to me. Evan. Yeah, if you're a Protestant, you're not, you don't follow the Pope anymore. So, is he doing this for religious reasons? No, no. no he's doing it for his own marriage. Okay, you need to put a star, though. You need to put a star. He will create the Angelican faith. He will create the Angelican faith. Angel, eh? Angel. Angelican faith, which is very Catholic. Except, no papal power. Said essentially, and the king is now the head of the church. How convenient. Right? Very convenient. So, Henry VIII is going to uh, become a Protestant, not because he believes in it, but because he hates the Pope, because the Pope won't give him a divorce. So he creates his own church, and he becomes the leader of that church. You need to know, sitting King and Queen is the leader of the Angelican Church. You need to know go. John Calvin in France. John Calvin in France is going to turn Protestant. And he is going to spread Protestantism throughout France. Okay. He writes down a Protestant version of the Bible writes a Protestant version of the Bible. I cut out some of like the... Some of the... Okay. Skip the space, center it. You need to write Catholic Reformation. We have the Protestant Reformation, now we have the Catholic Reformation. <coughs> Catholic Reformation is how the Catholic Church reacts to the 95 Theses 
is how the Catholic Church reacts to the 95 Theses. So, if the Catholic Church is literally organize, reorganizing itself, does it have a big impact? Yes. You need to know. They are going to redefine the doctrine of the church. They're going to cut up some fluff. Okay? And they are going to try to increase spirituality. Okay? A connection with God. A direct connection with God. They're going to try to increase it. Okay. You need to know the Council of Trent. Council of Trent is a big one. Council of Trent is where all the Pope and his cardinals meet to discuss ways to improve the church. So if you're coming up with specific evidence about the Catholic Church's changing, Council of Trent would be a great piece of evidence. You also need to know they create the Society of Jesus. <coughs> known as Jesuits. Oh my god, did you know the term Jesuits? Oh my goodness, how exciting. You need to know that Jesuits, you don't need to know Ignatius Loyal, I don't care. <coughs> you need to know that they're supposed to be re rigorously religious and secular in education. They're supposed to be the creme de la creme of Catholics. So, Jesuits are supposed to be super religious, but secular in education. So, they're supposed to be pushing the boundaries of math and science in order to improve the glory of God. Does that hold true today? By the way, Jesuits are actually the super, oh, you need to know they're super effective missionaries. They're doing missionary work. So, if you're a Catholic and you've done missionaries, you've done them. Here we go. Witch hunts. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do it. Let's give a space center. In. Witch hunts. This is a direct impact of the Protestant Reformation. You need to know that. It's a direct impact of the Protestant Reformation. Okay. It's a direct impact because they use witches as a way to kill Protestants or Catholics. Both sides. Both sides. They use witches as a justification to kill Protestants and Catholics. Who do you think is going to be the one they kill the most of? <coughs> no, they just kind of indiscriminately kill women. Yeah, it's all about killing women most of them. Alright. <laughs> you need to know that. Um, most of these witches are females. Oh my god, how surprising. Okay, they're females. Okay, and these are women who reject social norms. Like, getting married at the age of 14. Doesn't that sound fun? These are women who wait till, like, God forbid, 19. Damn. Okay? <laughs> now, you do need to know that... These women are typically blamed for crop failures and other women's miscarriages. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm proud to say, as a Massachusetts man, we killed 234. Uh, 36 were hung, 234 witches were tried. By the way, how you try a witch is you burn them. Yeah. And if they live, they're a witch. And if they die, oh, yes, you are. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> so, you know. All right, skip a space. Center it. Your re religious war. So, women are being targeted, obviously, by the witch hunts. Now, men are going to be targeted in war. So, woo. Here we go. You need to know that in France, you just have like an internal civil war between Protestants and Catholics. In France, it tears France apart between Protestants and Catholics. Okay. They are fighting heavily. The monarch 
wants to be Catholic, but the people want to be Protestant. That's the big problem with France. Eventually, who wins? The people eventually win, and the monarchy will change to Protestant. Eventually. Don't write that down yet. Sort of a little bit of Skip a space, center it. Let's skip a space, center it. Uh, next one is Spain. Spain is super Catholic, and you need to write that down. Spain is super Catholic. They're still super Catholic today. Like, you go to Spain, and they're, like, still, like, one of the best Catholic nations in the world. Italy's obviously first. I think we all saw that coming. But Spain's number two, okay? So they're super Catholic. You need to know that 1588, the king of Spain, Philip II, attack England with the Spanish Armada, and I'd underline Spanish Armada. By the way, you need to know 1588. 1588 is a must-know date, by the way. You need to know in 1588, <laughs> Philip II uh, of Spain is going to use the Spanish Armada and invade England because England left the church. Okay, because England left Catholicism. Who takes England out of Catholicism? Henry VIII. Okay? So, in order to punish England, Henry, uh, Philip II invades England with the Spanish Armada. He loses! <coughs> you need to know, he loses and is beaten by Elizabeth I. She's the Queen of England at the time. Yeah! Yeah! We just had, like murdered 45,000 women, but we got one in charge. Yeah! Yeah, Elizabeth! <coughs> yeah! Hi, this is your second woman. Can we please celebrate this? This is our second woman. Please be excited. Elizabeth I will defeat her. We'll defeat her. Mostly because it was a terrible storm, but let's not get caught up on details. Okay, so England stays Protestant. You need to know that. England stays Protestant. By the way, Elizabeth I is the daughter of Henry VIII from his first marriage, by the way. Okay, and I'm Years more. Skip a, a skip a space. You're still under wars, but like this is a big one you need to know. The Thirty Years War. Okay, and it's between Catholics and Protestants. It is between Catholics and Protestants. And it starts in Germany. And it'll eventually involve pretty much every country here. So, the Thirty Years' War is going to be fought mostly in Germany and it's between Protestants and Catholics. Okay? Eventually, the Protestants win. Okay? However, it will involve most of Europe at this point. It's going to have a super negative effect on Europe. It's going to cause an economic downturn. It causes an economic downturn in Europe. So, So, what you do need to know, don't care about it. Okay? So, that's it. Thirty years war. Let's do some boards here. Let's do that. Here we go. On your white board, please tell me what is the text Martin Luther wrote, hung on a door, and said, Catholic Church, you should stop. The 39th person. What is it, William? On your white board, please tell me what is the name of his biggest complaint against the Catholic Church. What is his biggest complaint against the Catholic Church? Good. What is it, Sophia? Indulgences. Indulgences. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the person who will convert his country to Protestantism because he wants a divorce. Good. Who is it, Slav? Henry VIII, on your whiteboard, what is the name of the Protestant leader who is going to be in France and 
he is going to rewrite the Bible along with Protestant beliefs. Uh, you're Calvinist. Anyone here go to a Calvinist church? It's one of the largest sects of Protestantism. I guess it's not very popular here in here. Lily, John Calvin on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is the name of. Uh, Please tell me what country is going to attack England because they left the church. And tell me the leader's name. What is the name of the country and the leader's name who will invade Italy and uh, England because they left the church? What is it? Alexa. Spain and the King Philip II. There you go. What do we call his attack and what year is it? What it what year is it? And what do we call his attack, which fails, and which will be the demise, beginning of the end of Spain? Good. What is it, Jared? Oh, uh, Spanish Armada. <laughs> there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the official collapse of Spain. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of... What is the name of the war that is going to be mostly fought in Germany, but eventually bring all of Europe into it? Good. What is it? Ashlyn. 30 years war. 30 years war. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the conflict. No, nope, that's it. We gotta go. Okay. All right, so we have new monarchs. New monarchs with Protestant ideals. Okay, so Protestantism is going to take hold of England and France. Okay, you need to know that. They're both Protestant nations at this time. England and France will become Protestant. You need to know that Henry VIII is going to take back all church lands. All Catholic holdings will now be controlled by the, uh, by the monarch. Is that a good deal for the king or a bad deal? Good deal. Oh yeah, they're super, super valuable. By the way, the Catholic Church owns more land than any country or company in the world. Right now. 2019. They own more <laughs> land than any country or uh, company. You need to know that Louis the Eleventh of France, Louis the Eleventh, is going to increase taxes, <coughs> specifically on salt. Okay. You need to know that Ferdinand and Isabella. This is Fernando, it's just the Spanish version. We're going to go with the English version. Fernand and Isabella, both will score on the AP exam, it doesn't matter. Fernand and Isabella are going to begin the Spanish Inquisition. Okay? They are looking to rid their country of every religion except Catholics. You need to write that down. Okay? Spanish Inquisition. They are trying to rid their country of everyone who is not a Catholic. Okay. What is going to happen is they are going to jail you and then murder you. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Guess who most of the people they kill are? Yeah. No women. Yeah. Indiscriminately. Catholics and Protestants. So, like for instance, you all know how much I hate Lily, right? She's just the worst. With that being said, I could say, hey, Lily thinks Martin Luther's right. And guess what would happen to your girl Lily? She'd be dead within like three days. Yeah, so guess what? Is this a good thing for the country or a bad thing for the country? Yeah, you think we're divided here in 2019 in the United States. Look, think of how crazy it was in Spain. Damn. Okay, so you need to know that. Okay, you need to know. Skip a space, center it. English Civil War. Okay, so 
up. What is going to happen is we are going to have England declare itself a constitutional monarchy <coughs> after the English Civil War. The English Civil War is between Protestants and Anglicans. Okay? Between Protestants and Anglicans. Okay. You need to know King Charles loses and gets his head chopped off. During the English Civil War, King Charles I loses and he gets his head chopped off. So King Charles was Protestant. Uh, he was Angelica. The Protestant journal. Okay. Right underneath it, the new heading, like the English Civil War, then underneath it, you need the Glorious Revolution. Okay. Glorious Revolution. You need to know. The English Civil War will eventually fail. Okay. Where you have a king with no head. Okay, England doesn't like not having a monarchy. I would write that down. England doesn't like ha not having a monarchy. Okay, so they bring King James II back first. Okay, so they bring King James II. He's a turd. You can write that down. I think that's historically accurate. Now, his father was King James the First, Charles the First. Okay, so King James the Second is King Charles the First's son. So, how do you think he feels about England killing his father? Not good. So, England feels bad after, and they're like, "Ah, shit." So they invite King James the Second to come to England to rule. He rules for like 15 years. He hates British people. Why? They killed his dad. So he's like super mean to the British people. And they're like, we can't deal with this. So what the British people do is they kick King James II off the throne. They've already killed the king. And they're like, we'll do it to you. We'll kill you. But then they're like, nah, we'll just let you go. So King James II steps down. And he is replaced by Mary and William, king and queen. Mary and William, William and Mary, that's the phrase we usually say, William and Mary <coughs> replace King James II. King. William and Mary take the throne only by guaranteeing the creation of Parliament. William and Mary take the throne only by agreeing to create Parliament. What do you got, Reagan? Um, or like just in evidence. Remember, all royalty married other royalty. It's only until recently that we have mar uh, royalty not marrying royalty, like Kate, William, um, Meghan, and Harry. Okay, that's the only time. Okay, so now we're going to see that there's Parliament is created. You need to know that Parliament gets created. <laughs>
So, he controls all of France from Versailles. You need to know that. Not for sales. Versailles. If I'm correcting the way you say it, it, it has to be like <coughs> definitive. Okay, you need to know that Louis XIV is known as the Sun King. He believes that he is an absolute monarch. You need to write that down. He believes he's an absolute monarch. All power. It is created by Cardinal Richelieu. You need to know that name. It's on your test tomorrow. You need to know that Cardinal Richelieu is the one who's going to create French absolutism. Okay? You need to know that he is going to claim that he is the direct connection with God and it is his right. Cardinal Richelieu is going to create absolutism. Henry, not Henry, Louis XIV is the major guy. Jared, I am exhausted and I'm going to head my heads up so yours is up too, for sure. You need to know that he uses the Palace of Versailles to gain more power. He uses his house to gain more power. Does anyone know how? How does he do it, Evelyn? Yeah, he forces all of them to live there. Yeah. He gets them drunk and fat every night to keep them quiet and not complain so he can get away with anything he wants. It's pretty genius. Yeah, don't worry, he's eventually going to be murdered off. No, he lives a long life. It's his, his grandson who's going to get chopped off. Wait, okay. How about we do some boards? I think we've covered a lot. Here we go, on your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is the name uh, of the king who is going to be removed from power in the Glorious Revolution? And tell me who he is replaced with. What is the name of the gentleman who loses power in the Glorious Revolution, and who is he replaced with? No, Shannon. Good. Who is it? Uh, Joey. James II, and he's replaced by William and Mary. There you go. William and Mary are only allowed to take the throne because they create what institution in Europe? Good. What is it, Jared? Parliament. Parliament. On your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is, what is the name of the architect of French absolutism? What is the name of the architect of French absolutism? And he comes up with the idea of moving all the nobles into his palace. Who is it? Who we got, Maggie? What is the name of the Sun King? By the way, you're going to study Versailles in AP Art History, by the way. Good. No, no, bring it. I will never accept that. What is it, Madison? Louis the Fourteenth. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the king who gets executed in the English Civil War? Guys, you need numbers. You can't write Charles. Like you're not casual with Charles. Who is it, Alexa? Charles the first. There we go. All right, let's give a space center in. Here we go. Absolutism in Ferdinand, Russia. Okay, you're going to put a big star. The <laughs> Mongols have been removed. And the Romanov family rules. Russia. Romanov's up there. <coughs> Romanov. Okay, the Mongols are out of uh, Russia, and now the Romanovs are in. The Romanovs are going to lead Russia until 1917. Almost 300 years. Almost. Alright, so, a little more than that. So, you need to know the first of the Romanovs is Peter the Great, Peter the First. Okay, he wants to modernize Russia to be more like Europe. Why do they need to be modernized? You can raise your hand and point it out to me. Why do they need to be modernized? Hello, hello. 
love characters. Yeah, do you think the Mongols were advancing? No, absolutely not. So, he is going to build the new capital of St. Petersburg. Anyone been to St. Petersburg? Is it cool? I hear it's amazing. Frey's been there. I've never been there. I hear it's like a really cool city. Anyway, um, you need to know that he is going to force all beards to be shaved. <laughs> if he loves that crap. Why? Why are they going to force all the beards to be shaved? <laughs> come on, people. Come on. Come on. Reagan. Yeah, it's a little more European. Because what did the Mongols all have? Beards. So they're trying to shake the Mongolian heritage. They're trying to shake it off and try to look more European. Okay, skip in space. So you got Catherine the Great. Catherine the Second. You need to know that she is going to conquer more territory than anyone else. Huge military leader. It's your third woman, by the way. There's only eight of them all year, so please drink it in. We've got two in one day. Okay? However, uh, she does some social reforms, but it, it ends with failure. By the way, fun fact she likes. Actually, I'm not going to get distracted. I'm not going to get distracted. And any other Russian. Okay, skip a space, center it. Okay, you need to know, I write the heading, the Peace of Westphalia. Peace of Westphalia. What's your heading? You need to know it ends the Thirty Years' War. The Peace of Westphalia ends the Thirty Years' War. It will guarantee Okay? It guarantees countries to be recognized as sovereign and equal in Europe. I'm going to write this bullet point right here. Okay? European states to be recognized as sovereign and equal. So ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted your country to turn Protestant, is it okay for Spain, a Catholic nation, to say no? No. All of a sudden, the idea of a sovereign state is the first time this is happening. You need to also write down, it made it illegal to invade any other countries. Is that a big deal? Yes. Okay, so, you need to know that peace of Westphalia is what creates state sovereignty. It is also going to make it illegal to invade other countries, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big, big deal. Okay. We've already kind of talked about population growing. You do need to know the term capitalism. <laughs> your next heading, capitalism. It's created by Adam Smith. You need to know that. What a white guy name. <laughs> Adam Smith. You need to know. He writes the book, The Wealth of Nations. You need to know that for tomorrow. He writes the book, The Wealth of Nations, and he's the founder of capitalism. He believes that people should be able to make as much money as possible. Okay? People should be able to make as much money as possible. Isaac Newman is doing physics. 
All of this challenges. This is part of the scientific revolution. It's challenging the church's authority. All right, so I'm going to sadly we're on low vessel. All right, so scientific revolution is happening and challenges the church's authority. And you have the Enlightenment, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very big deal, mostly because it's going to inspire the American Revolution, which is going to inspire revolutions all around the world. Okay, you need to know John Locke. John Locke is all about individual freedoms. You should be aware of these people. Have you heard of these people before? John Locke, you need to know his individual freedoms. Okay, you need to know Montesquieu. Montesquieu is right here. He believes in uh, freedom of speech. No, that's wrong. Montesquieu's not. He believes in the three <laughs> branches of government. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Voltaire is your freedom of speech. I'm so sorry. Voltaire is your freedom of speech. Montesquieu is your three branches. Hey, if you think I'm wrong, tell me. Okay. Montesquieu, three branches of government. Voltaire is your freedom of speech. Oh, thank God. We hustled hard. We hustled hard. All right, here we go on your whiteboard. Please tell me who put the sun in the center of the universe. Never mind. Goodbye. 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 We finished. Are you happy? Good luck in APR history. Keep it in mind, Samantha Bennett does not do that to you. So when you think about talking shit about me, just be like, yes, yeah, Samantha Bennett. I'm going to see it right now. After your uh, test tomorrow, I get up. Then the binder.